and welcome back to Otaku No Video. As always, thank you very much for joining me, where I'm going to explain a bit of the backstory behind a news item from this week relating to the Robotech live-action movie. It was announced this week that the director of the recent remake of It, the Stephen King story, was or has been now attached to the Robotech live-action movie. Uh, I'll explain a little back, uh, background behind all that. Basically, for about a decade now, there has been talk of and serious Hollywood plans to make a live-action adaptation of the Robotech anime adaptation. I'll explain what Robotech is in a minute, but basically, back in 2007, uh, Tobey Maguire was attached to a, an adaptation of Robotech, and they hired uh, Lawrence Kasdan, who wrote Raiders of the Lost Ark and Empire Strikes Back, Strikes Back to write it, with uh, Charles Roven, who did uh, Afro Samurai, Dark Knight, um, to work on that, as well as Akiva Goldsman, who I believe also worked on Robotech back in the day. Uh, they've got other folks involved who got in and then uh, were, you know, pulled out. I'm sure Toby McGuire is out of it now, at this point. Then, um, in 2015, they hired, uh, let's see here, Michael, Gold, Michael Gordon, excuse me, who wrote 300 and the story behind G.I. Joe Rise of the Cobra to write the script with, gosh, a bunch of other folks uh, overseeing it, Sony and Columbia Pictures and, and such. Um, with various executive producers at Harmony Gold, who sort of produced Robotech on staff as well. Now, this new announcement involves Andy Muschietti, who directed it, and he's been tapped to direct the film, and his creative partner and sister, Barbara Muschietti, is also coming along to produce it, along with Gianni Nunnery and Mark Canton, who worked on 300 and The Immortals. So... Things are progressing, I guess, as much as anything does in development hell in Hollywood, where they got a director at least. That's that's progress, but who knows? Now, Robotech itself is it's got this long and complex history in anime fandom. Basically, the Robotech came about because this company called Harmony Gold was looking to get into. Um, basically producing animation and broadcasting it in America. There were a lot of uh, anime series in the 60s and 70s and, and the early 80s that had been repackaged and resold in America, and that's a story for another time. And Harmony Gold was looking to get into that. They approached Carl Maycheck, who had worked in um, the film business a little bit and had actually worked... Uh, he, he was an anime fan, he was big into anime, and he made some contacts in the Japanese industry. He actually sold animation cells, so the actual artwork, the actual, the actual drawings that, that make up anime. He was a cell dealer. And some folks from Harmony Gold essentially walked into his shop and said, Hey, do you know about this anime stuff? Oh, yeah, I do. And they said, Would you help consult with us about this, this idea we have? And he came in and... Um, Basically, they worked on finding anime that they could bring over. His idea was, instead of commissioning animation, why not just take anime that's already been, been made and then release it over here in America? So the problem back then was that there were very few anime series that could actually be aired in syndication. Syndication requires, I think it's 85 episodes of a show, um, because back then... It gets complicated, but basically, the net, the the individual stations needed a lot of episodes to show something five days a week. You know, cartoons for kids were typically shown weekday afternoons, and you n needed more than twenty six episodes, right? That would that would finish you off in less than a month and a half. So you needed you know mul many many dozens of episodes to make something happen. And so Maycheck and Company came, came up with the idea of licensing three different anime series and then releasing them all as one show by taking side bits of dialogue, stuff where a character might say, we got defeated again, this is a real shame, we will have to work better and harder and we'll defeat them next time. And they would change that to, we were defeated again, we will have to report back on this to the masters. And the masters would be the villains for the next series, right? So they kind of set up and explain and 
and bring in some of these storylines by changing some of these little little bits of dialogue here and there. And then, of course, there were some bits of content in the, in the Japanese productions that couldn't air on American television. So stuff like, you know, graphic violence, people's heads exploding, um, nudity, things like that had to be edited out. Um, as well as one or two, you know, cultural things where there was often English on signs, and so where possible they would kind of edit around that. They, they might, you know, zoom in the shot a little bit, um, or if it was a, a, a long sequence, they would just kind of cut out the one or two shots of characters just standing there next to this, this sign that has a, a completely misspelled English word. That was the, the vast majority of the changes. And so they released Robotech as three different anime series, or three different anime series as Robotech. Super Dimension Fortress Macross, um, Super Calvary Southern Cross, I believe, and Genesis Climber Muspita. And they all looked very similar, um, you know, visually, and, but they were all done by different directors and at different times. And so, unfortunately, this was a big controversy back in the day because it was edited for television. Um, it was, they also changed a lot of the names. So Hikaru became Rick, for example. Misa became Lisa. And this was seen as butchering these original shows. A lot of folks didn't really go back and find out the backstory behind these people, and they just assumed that they were all corporate bigwigs that didn't care, and assumed that, you know, NBC would show graphic blood and violence at 3 p.m. on a weekday afternoon. Uh, it was, it was a really unfortunate. And so, unfortunately, Matrix got excoriated for doing this, but Robotech was hugely popular. It was, no doubt, one of the most popular cartoon shows of its day. There was a convention just for Robotech back in the day. Uh, that's how big it was. Uh, they made a lot of money. It was, a, it was a big, big success. And it opened the door for licensing anime and releasing it in America in a big way. This had been done in the past with shows like Astro Boy and uh, uh, Star Blazers and Speed Racer. Um, this was kind of a new era where those were successful uh, you know, those worked, but this was this became part of the the culture in a way that those shows um, hadn't recently. You know, this was this was the new thing, right? Like those had been successful back in the sixties and seventies. This was a thing of the eighties that suddenly said to told people this is this was valuable. Also, more importantly, Robotech created American anime fandom. That is not hyperbole. Um, I have read interviews with folks who were around back then, folks who became who got into the anime industry in America or got into anime fandom, and they all said, this was the demarcation point. There were people before Robotech who watched and enjoyed anime. You know, fans existed, but they became a fandom. They became organized. They started organizing conventions, you know, anime conventions, post-Robotech. This was the... the moment the shot heard around the world where suddenly anime fandom was a thing as a distinct fandom. You know, we would all not be here as anime fans without Robotech. There's just no question. So, you know, whatever you think about the changes, and you can go back and, and see what, what, what was done, and, you know, you can certainly go on either side of the fence on that one. It was incredibly important for anime fandom in America, and also for introducing a lot of uh, Americans to some of these shows. So a lot of folks who, you know, maybe only heard about things, they heard about Matt Cross, they heard about Southern Cross, heard about Muspita, went back and watched it after hearing about it through Robotech. So Watershed anime series back in the day, and now they're looking to make a live action series, or, they ha or live action movie, as they have for the past decade at least. And we'll see where it goes. And obviously this is cashing in on all sorts of, of recent nostalgia things, like the Speed Racer movie, not recent, but, you know, things like you know, Lord of the Rings, geek culture is now a thing. Pacific Rim, your know, mecha, is now a thing. Um, you know, these are things that can actually attract attention. So folks are trying to find that next thing, and Robotech is it. It continues to be in development. Will it ever get out of that? Who knows? Bebop has been in development hell for years as well. Uh, a lot of these things, just people keep turning and turning their wheels on, and just nothing comes out of it. Which, by the way, is good, because often that means that nobody can find the right way of doing it. 
You don't want them churning out something that is just dumb. It's Hollywood, they probably will, but I would rather there be some filter rather than not at all, right? So that's the backstory behind the Robotech live action movie. I hope that's helpful. And um, uh, I will be back for more backstories as the news permits. So thank you for watching. See you next time.